Now at 8 o'clock, a triple murder investigation is underway in Knox County. Plus, the Wildcats improved to 25 0 with a major win against South Carolina. We'll have those highlights in sports. And we're tracking the potential for the first significant winter storm of the season. I'll show you what we expect to find in Kentucky in the coming days. Coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good morning to you on this Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Whitney Wetzel. And I'm Sean Moody. It is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Just a lot of wintry, nasty stuff coming. Yeah, if you haven't stepped outside yet this morning, you probably don't want to if you don't <laughs> have to because it is freezing. Yeah, it, it really is, and there's more coming this way. Let's check in right now with Mike Linden over in the First Alert Weather Center to see how the rest of the day and beyond is looking. Well, Sean and Whitney, right now it's a good four degrees in Fayette County. Temperatures are quite frigid, but we're looking toward what we expect to find a little bit later this evening. Not showing up right now on live first alert defender, but we are currently still dealing with cold air filtering in from the north. And in accordance with that, moist air coming in from the southwest of us. And check this out, this storm's path. Those are winter storm warnings, that pink color there. And that's also the path of this storm as it works its way into the Arctic cold Midwest. And that winter storm warning goes into effect at 7 o'clock tonight. That blue color, that's a winter storm watch, more than likely, which will get upgraded to a winter storm warning. That will also stay with us into Tuesday morning. So the first call for snowfall from that storm, and it looks like a big one, 6 to 12 inches of snow for that area in blue, 4 to 8 for the white area. I'll show you what else this storm might bring for us for the next few days and give you a closer look at how snow, rain, and ice could impact the region. All right, Mike, we'll check back in here in a few minutes. We do have a number of church closings to pass along to you this morning. Just keep checking the ticker that's at the bottom of your screen. You can also visit WKYT.com for the most up-to-date information on both church and school closures. If you need to add a closing, you can sign up for an account online at WKYT.com slash close closings. And also don't forget, you can always track severe weather when you're away from your TV. On WKYT.com, you can take control of an interactive first alert defender and zoom right into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT first alert defender radar app for your iPad or smartphone. Just search just search for WKYT in your app store. And also be sure to help us track the snowfall across Kentucky this winter. Send us your photos and videos using the hashtag WKYT Rules Winter. And as Mike mentioned, that drop in temperatures could cause the roads to become very slick. Crews in Scott County have already been busy since early yesterday afternoon laying salt down on the roads to help prevent black ice. We didn't want to wait too long this afternoon. If you wait too long, you will lose whatever sun that you have there. And, and, and we want to go on and start getting it off of our roadways, and then it makes it better evening. It's a whole lot safer. The faster you react, it makes it a whole lot safer. Crews are also asking drivers to slow down tonight and watch for slick spots. Also making news this morning, Kentucky State Police are investigating a triple murder in Whitley County that's now connected to a shooting in Baltimore, Maryland. Corbin police say someone shot and killed three family members at their home in Corbin. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is at the live desk with the story. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Sean and Whitney. That's right. Police are investigating this as a triple murder after the family members were found dead inside their Corbin home. We've learned the victims are Union College professor Dr. Sarah Hendricks, her husband Kevin, and their daughter Grace. Police responded to the home on Forest Circle Drive around 5 o'clock yesterday and found the three shooting victims. Corbin police say they responded to the home for a welfare check after officers in Baltimore County, Maryland, shot and killed a male juvenile in a car that was registered to the Forest Circle Drive <clears throat> address in Corbin. Now, officers say that driver shot at them first after a pursuit. According to the Baltimore Sun, Corbin police have confirmed the juvenile shot by officers was a suspect in the triple murder investigation. His name is not being released at this time. Now, Union College in Barberville issued a statement last night saying the community is heartbroken by the tragic deaths and asked for thoughts and prayers for the Hendricks family. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. 
Right, thank you, Hillary. WKYT is also tracking another murder in Scott County this weekend. Scott County Coroner John Goble said Scott Caldwell shot his wife, Rebecca, then himself Saturday morning. Now, WKYT has interviewed Scott Caldwell several times over the past few years. He lost his mother, father, sister, and brother in law in a Christmas Eve wreck in Knox County back in 2012. Rebecca worked at Toyota. The Scott County Coroner said their bodies are in Frankfurt awaiting autopsies. New this morning, an investigation is underway after a deadly crash in Laurel County Friday night. Deputies say Leslie Abner was driving down Johnson Road near the Clay County line around 11. Investigators say Abner lost control on a curve, left the roadway, and hit two trees. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Authorities have started an investigation into what exactly caused that crash. We are learning new details about a deadly overpass collapse last month near Cincinnati. Yesterday, the highway construction company working on that overpass said their demolition plan was flawed. The company says there were key details missing from that plan. A Kentucky man, 35 year old Brandon Carl of Bracken County, died when that overpass collapsed. Carl's parents are now suing Ohio's Department of Transportation. And a central Kentucky man is using technology to try and cut down on the number of wrecks involving distracted drivers. He's getting the word out about a new smartphone app that locks a driver's phone when their car starts to move. The Lifesaver app prevents the user from accessing their phone while their car is in motion. If someone unlocks the app while driving or tries to disable it, an alert can be sent to someone like a parent. A reward system can also be set up for teens who show they're not driving distracted. It seems to me that the, a lot of kids can't walk down the street without texting. And uh, that, that is the, what we're trying to do is stop them texting and driving. Uh, have them pull off the road if they need to text, and it will save lives. The creators of the Lifesaver app hope car dealerships will also encourage people to download it. It's available for free in the App Store. Time is running out to sign up for federal health insurance without facing penalties. Midnight tonight is the deadline to enroll for coverage through Connect in 2015. You can go sign up online or you can go to the Connect store at Fayette Mall in Lexington. State leaders say it's now easier than ever to get signed up for that coverage. We created a free app that folks can download and get a lot more information and access. We increased the capacity of our call center. We double the number of insurance agents throughout the state as connectors who can sit down face to face with our folks and talk them through this process. Now, if you miss this evening's deadline, you could face a tax penalty of $325 per person or 2% of your household income. For more information, visit connect.ky.gov. We have a link on our website, wkyt.com. It was a historic date with history yesterday. UK smashed South Carolina to propel them to 25 and 0. Lee K. Howard explains why the date is already being coined Valentine's Day. Hey guys, yeah, 25 wins to start a season. That ties the all time record set by Rupp's 1953 54 Wildcats. Win number 25 coming on Saturday afternoon against South Carolina. And a pair of familiar faces in the stands to watch this one Julius Randle and James Young. Cats out running early. The ball never touches the court on this possession. Beautiful passing there. Willie Colley Stein with the dunk. Cats jump out to the 10 point lead. Then off the high pick. Aaron Harrison drives in for the hoop plus the foul. 11 points on the day for Aaron. Still in the first half, Andrew Harrison, he kicks it out to Devin Booker in the corner. He buries a triple. Booker had nine. UK led 43 to 18 at the half. Second half was all Kentucky. How about Andrew rewarding Willie Colley Stein for running the floor? The lead was 29. Colley Stein, he was dominant. 14 points to go along with seven rebounds, leading the Wildcats to a convincing 25th win on the season. Cats win 77 to 43 over South Carolina. I'm telling you, winning is so much more fun than losing. You have no idea. <laughs> It just is. I mean, you know, losing stinks. And so, you know, we had to learn from a lot of stuff last year. And it was frustrating that they weren't getting it quick enough. But by the end of the year, we got it. That's right. The Cats do seem to have it right now. 25 wins to start the season. That's it for now. Back to you guys.
All right, thank you, Lee Kay. A huge fundraiser at the University of Kentucky marks a milestone this weekend. Over the past 10 years, Dance Blue, which is a 24 hour marathon that raises money for UK's pediatric cancer clinics, has raised more than $6.5 million. It started as a way to honor Jarrett Minier, a young cancer patient who made headlines after he started collecting toys for other patients. This year's marathon started at 2 yesterday at Memorial. Coliseum, and you can stop by there anytime before two o'clock today to show your support and even make a donation. Like we said, dancing will definitely there come in go. handy this morning. <laughs> the yeah, and you know the, the endurance dancing too. Yeah. It's impressive that long. <laughs> it is eight ten, and WKYT this morning is just getting started. When we come back, we have new details on a shooting in Denmark. We'll have that story plus a look at your top stories still to come on WKYT this morning. And Valentine's Day brings out the best and maybe the weirdest businesses. One unique convention may prove exactly what people will pay for. That story straight ahead. And what started this weekend looks to culminate as we head into the start of the work week. We're tracking the potential for the big one, a winter storm bearing down on Kentucky. I'll show you what it might bring us coming up. Now at 8.30, a triple murder investigation is underway in Corbin. Coming up in a live report, how police say it's tied to an East Coast shooting. An overnight fire in Irvin is under investigation after it destroys a home. And on this WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day, winter weather is bearing down on the bluegrass and in a big way. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on this WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. I'm Sean Moody. And I'm Whitney Wetzel. And it is certainly an extremely cold morning already this Sunday. Yeah, the, the temperatures were already terrible. There's snow coming. It just doesn't look great for weather. If you love snow, then you're going to be really happy. <laughs> Let's check in right now with Mike Linden over in the First Alert Weather Center. How's it all looking, Mike? Well, Sean and Whitney, if you've been waiting for the big one to get here, it looks like it is already on its way. The National Weather Service issuing a winter storm warning. That's that pink color there, which is covering most of the bluegrass. That goes into effect at 7 o'clock tonight and stays with us until Tuesday at 1 a.m. That blue color is a winter storm watch. Of course, not as severe as a warning, but more than likely we will see those counties that are highlighted in blue there get upgraded to a winter storm warning. Some of them, including Montgomery County, Rowan County, Bath County, we could see those few spots upgraded to a winter storm warning before the day is out because we are looking at potentially 6 to 12 inches of snow for most of the bluegrass, 4 to 8 for the Ohio, Indiana, and, and Tennessee, uh, the Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana line. Those numbers could be even higher. Higher locally. Coming up in about 10 minutes, I'll show you what else this storm might bring and how it's set to affect us almost the entire week ahead of us. All right, thank you, Mike. We also have a number of church closings to pass along to you this morning. Keep checking the ticker there at the bottom of your screen. You can also visit WKYT.com for the most up to date information on church and school closures. And if you need to add a closing, head over to WKYT.com slash closings to sign up for an account. Now, don't forget you can always track severe weather when you're away from your TV on WKYT.com. You can take control of an interactive first alert defender and zoom into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT. WKYT First Alert Defender radar app for your tablet or smartphone. Just search for WKYT in your app store. Also, be sure to help us track the snowfall across Kentucky this winter. Send us your photos and videos on Twitter and Facebook using the hashtag WKYT Rules Winter. Kentucky State Police are investigating a triple murder in Whitley County now connected to a shooting in Baltimore, Maryland. Police say someone shot and killed three family members at their home in Corbin. WKYT Hillary Thornton is at our live desk with this story. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Whitney and Sean. Police are investigating this as a triple murder after the family members were found dead inside their Corbin home. We've learned the victims are Union College professor Dr. Sarah Hendricks, her husband Kevin, and their daughter Grace. Police responded to the home on Forest Circle Drive just after 5 o'clock yesterday and found the three shooting victims. Corbin police say they responded to the home for a welfare check after officers in Baltimore County, Maryland, shot and killed a male juvenile 
He was in a car registered to that Forest Circle Drive address in Corbin. Officers say the driver shot at them first after a pursuit. Now, according to the Baltimore Sun, Corbin police have confirmed the juvenile shot by officers was a suspect in the triple murder investigation. His name is not being released at this time. Union College in Barberville issued a statement last night saying the community is heartbroken by the tragic deaths and asked for thoughts and prayers for the Hendricks family. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, back to you. Hillary, thank you. We now know the name of a husband and wife found dead in a home in Scott County. Coroner John Goebel says Scott Caldwell shot his wife Rebecca, then himself yesterday morning. Caldwell lost his mother, father, sister, and brother in law in a Christmas Eve wreck in Knox County back in 2012. Rebecca worked at Toyota. People who knew the Caldwells say they can't believe what happened. Our neighborhood is going to remember this forever. It's a great neighborhood. We never had problems around here, but for what reason something went wrong? The coroner says the bodies are now in Frankfurt awaiting autopsies. WKYT is learning new information this morning about an accident in Spencer County. Police say newly elected county magistrate Brian Bayers accidentally ran over and killed his 18 month old son Friday morning. According to the Spencer County Sheriff, the toddler ran outside and was behind the tire of Bayers' truck. The sheriff said Bayers didn't see his son when he was backing up. I just talked with uh, Brian a while ago, and I told him, I said, just remember to keep it strong and, and keep your faith in God. It's a tragic situation that we'll all stick together on, and um, we'll all be like a family. Funeral arrangements have not yet been set. Lexington police are still trying to figure out the cause of a deadly crash earlier this week. That crash happened just after noon Friday on Newtown Pike, just north of Ironworks Pike. The Fayette County Coroner identified the victim as 27 year old Nicholas Ham. Police say Ham was driving a box truck that dropped off the side of the road, clipped a utility pole, and then crashed into two trees. The coroner said he does not believe alcohol or drugs played a role in the crash. New this morning, a fire is under investigation in Estill County after it destroyed a home overnight. Firefighters were called to the home on Winston Road around 3 this morning. When they got there, crews say the home was covered in flames. They say that home was destroyed, but they haven't yet determined a cause. The owner wasn't home at the time, and no injuries there were reported. Also new this morning, a woman is behind bars after police say she slashed a man's throat with a knife. Lexington police were called to the country inn on Executive Drive just after 1.30 this morning. When they got there, they say they found a man with a deep cut on his neck. He told officers that a woman in one of the rooms there cut him with a knife. Emergency workers took him to the hospital, but police say he is expected to be okay. The woman is charged with assault. Time now is 8.38 on WKYT this morning, and when you think of Valentine's Day, a lot of people probably go the traditional route and book a fancy dinner reservation. Yeah, but not so down in Bowling Green. A lot of people there went off the beaten path. Our sister station, WBKO, says the town's White Castle took more than 60 dinner reservations last night. The White Castle decorated their dining area with flowers and tablecloths for the evening. Now, this isn't the first time a Kentucky White Castle has had a run-in with Valentine's Day. Last year, a couple was married at a White Castle over in Louisville. So only the finest. Yes, a lot of love for, for White Castle. Hey, if that's what you're craving, though, I mean, you got to satisfy the craving on that holiday, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> I want to see, you know, a, a layered cake just made purely out of sliders. That's what there's, I want. There's an idea for next that's lunch. year. Oh, yeah. I'm oh. doing it for lunch today. Oh, Let's well, do it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, after the break, a sassy Florida woman's courtroom demeanor has us all laughing across the country, but there's a darker story behind this viral video that's ahead still on WKYT this morning. And Saturday's winter weather was just the beginning. We're tracking even more active winter weather as we head into the early stages of the work week. I'll show you a winter storm bearing down on Kentucky and what it will bring coming up.